Welcome back, everybody, to episode seven of Lake Play's City Skylines, and we've got cows and pigs. This uh, this little agricultural zone has uh, filled in a little bit, and we've got some interesting things to look at here. This uh, let's see, this is animal farm. Phil's Fields. Another animal farm. A baking company, which weirdly looks the same as the juice company, I think. A bakery? Juice press, yeah. So apparently you get juice, bacon, and baked goods all from the same type of machines. Which uh, probably should disturb us a little bit in this uh, crazy world of city skylines, but we'll, uh, we'll just pretend like they know what they're doing. <laughs> Um, you will notice that the edge here actually has just filled in with traditional industrial uh, and it is zoned for industrial but if we look at the data view here for uh, resources here uh, this must just be on the edge of of where the available uh, fertile land is for agriculture so uh, we might want to dezone that and turn it into something else, because uh, I didn't really want, you know, regular polluting industry to to head over this direction. Speaking of pollution, we should probably look and see what our pollution levels actually are. Yeah, that's that's pretty gross. That's really gross. <laughs> um, so kind of what what I wanted to do longer term in this city is keep the industrial kind of in this corner here. Uh, kind of follow the freeway edges where um, presumably we're going to get noise pollution from the freeways anyway. Yeah. So kind of clustering up against the, the freeways. Uh, the freeways don't appear to produce regular pollution, which is, I guess this is just talking about ground pollution and water pollution. I don't think that there is an air pollution mechanic in this game. Um, I mean, there is wind, but this is, I think this is mainly for you know, wind turbine performance, uh, which is interesting. So uh, let's just do, before we jump into things, do a quick check of our electricity, which is looking good, and our water, which is looking good. Because uh, I have experienced in a couple of other playthroughs that if you let your water and electricity get out of hand, you just don't notice, uh, and you run out, uh, people just immediately start leaving your city in huge quantities, and then you're in the death spiral, and you can't get out of it. So. Uh, electricity and water are super important to keep an eye on, uh, apparently. Um, I mean, as, you know, would make sense, I suppose, in a real city. If your uh, electricity goes out and your water goes out, you're not going to stay, presumably. So, uh, in this episode, I wanted to develop this corner a bit for our industrial, maybe move some of this industrial out here, and we're also in desperate need of more residential zone. So I guess to start off, I want to rezone these blocks here as high-density residential. So let's let this run as we do it. Uh, so that should take some of the demand. And then actually, we should probably start... Um, I'm going to fill in some of this. This will get rezoned as some of these streets come back through again. But uh, okay, we do have water coverage. Good. But we're going to need that. Uh, we're also might as well start putting it here. Uh, these people at the edge are not going to like that, I suppose. But for now, this is what we're going to go with as a stopgap. I'm really bummed that I didn't sort of see this ahead of time and put this double double road down through the middle of here, which I can do. But it means that each of these blocks will only be seven tiles wide, which means you'll only be able to fit... Um, well, it's not true that you'd only fit one building, because the buildings do have different sizes. So, I mean, if we look... I think we have to look at it with this grid on. Um, okay, these are all four wide. Like, that one is smaller. So what is what's this size here? So that's two. Um, this one here is three. 
So we can fit some other stuff in there. It looks like there is some variation in sizes for stuff, but the max size is this 4x4. Four four. So it seems like that's probably the most efficient way to go, is to always maintain that 4x4. Four four. Um, I guess at some point maybe we'll do an experiment and run this road through here and just see if you know, if a seven wide block is is a big inefficiency or not. I'm guessing that it is, but I don't know. So, um, we don't have a huge demand for industrial at the moment, but I'm gonna zone a little bit of this here. Let's let this keep running. And let's see, so residential is still our major, major issue, so. Let's um, just for now keep bringing this out. Think about there, and then I'm gonna have kind of a an avenue run along the river. I think that would be kind of nice. So let's run this this way, and like so. I'm just doing it this way because I wasn't sure where this road lines up and it does not line up in the middle there, so. Alright. And that'll just be an extra long block. Okay, so let's uh let's drop that in. Let's give him some water. Okay, I'm gonna show you also something, um another sort of data view. Actually, I can bring that out. So let's look. Uh, which is relevant, I think, to um, yes, yeah, whether we're missing on services or problems in our city. If we go, let's pause it. If we go into the menu here, which is kind of a weird place to put this, but city statistics will give you your graph views. So if we look at population, notice we've had some issues here, and I think this is these two humps here are where we had high demand for residential and then weren't f you know weren't filling that demand and then uh, people were leaving because then the balance of jobs to, to residential got screwed up so we're gonna have to keep a closer eye on our our, uh, our ratio of residential commercial industrial um, also I was looking here at education levels and we've kind of peaked out and I think this is because we've we've maxed out the populations in our elementary school and our high school. Uh, so the education levels just aren't getting any higher than this, which means we are gonna need a university quickly, I think. So, uh, one other thing to look at, not there, here. Let's let this run while we look. Um, we can see kind of some big picture views of our, of our city here. Uh, by the way, we should rename our city. I did not name it at the beginning. Uh, so if anybody has any uh, suggestions as to what we should name our cities, leave those in the comments. Um, you know, I like kind of geographical names, so maybe something that fits with the river fork or this lake over here. I don't know. Uh, so if anybody has any, any fun ideas for that, uh, let me know. We can also see that uh, we are leveling up our buildings, which is a good sign, so, so things are working that way. Our happiness, uh, oops. I always go to heart for happiness, but happiness is this guy. Uh, happiness is good, although it's a little lower, I think, than than it was last time. Only a handful of abandoned buildings, which is good. And then the other thing I wanted to check was our education level. So we're at capacity again. We're going to need something. Maybe I'll put it down in this area. That would probably be a good idea. Uh, so, yeah, our elementary schools are maxed out. And our high school is almost maxed out. Well, we get about 25% left to go, I guess. And we look, we have 56% of the population is uneducated. Uh, which, you know, I, I suppose they start out all at zero. So we're making good progress, but our university is uh, the next thing we need there. Unfortunately, I believe the university is really expensive. 75000 which we do not currently have. So, um, is this running? Okay, it is running. Everything seems okay. I'm just going to check these again quick. All right. Uh, people are not really moving in down here. I might just speed this up a bit. And I checked our cemetery. Our cemetery is doing good. We only have eight, eight bodies out of 3,000 that we can hold. 
Um, our traffic situation is still, you know, it's still kind of bad. This whole intersection is terrible. So I think when we expand this direction, I'm going to put an interchange like this instead of like this. Uh, because this, I mean, this just gums up in this weird double one-way thing, which is just really, really ugly. Uh, I, I don't like that at all. So I'm going to definitely change that. And that should help, because over here, you know, traffic just moves very smoothly through this. There's two intersections here, but uh, it's not like this double intersection. So if you're in this line of traffic here, you're one of these donut vans, you got to come here, sit at the light, take a right, and then immediately take a left. You know, so you imagine that in real life, this would be a nasty snarl of you know, a traffic situation, which uh, is being simulated here. It is a nasty snarl. So we'll get that sorted out, I think. Um, we also want... Okay, they're telling us... Oh dear, okay. This is the other thing that we were going to have to deal with this episode. Uh, our landfill. The landfill is full. Um, so we would expect garbage to start piling up, and I, I think that it will. But we do have this incinerator. Um, and our incinerator, does it give us a capacity? And actually, can we see here, maybe? Yeah, our, see, we just don't have enough incinerators to keep up with how much garbage we're actually producing. Uh, which is why the landfill was filling up. So, we are going to need to deal with this quickly. Uh, how much does an incinerator cost? 30000 So we do have enough for this. Speaking of money, uh, we paid off this loan recently, so we might as well take that. Uh, extra twenty thousand. It's going to cost four hundred a week, uh, and we have plenty to, to cover that. So let's take that loan. This one we still have thirty-eight thousand left on it. So, all right. So that gives us a little bit of buffer. But let's look here. We want another incinerator, and I think we are going to need another landfill, uh, which is unfortunate. But uh, we should be able to deal with this better as time goes on. I hope there, there's some more facilities uh, that will help out. So, pop this guy down. Let's let this run. Okay, we're still not able to keep up, so we are going to need another landfill as well. And I'm going to put that guy down here at this end. Right there. Alright. So now we're, we are going to need to move this when we redo this road area here. Uh, and like I was saying in a previous episode, in order to do that we have to actually empty it out. Um, so we're going to need a, a totally empty landfill to do that emptying uh, before we can move it, which is going to be going to be interesting. Alright, um, what else do we want to do this episode? Everything is looking healthy. Okay, I think we need the, the school down here. Now we have 66,000. I think that's enough to get a school going. And we need, we're more in need of the elementary school than the high school, but I think we probably want just to build both of them. Let's check how much they cost. So our elementary school is going to cost 10,000. It's 24. So okay, yeah, we have we have enough for that. So, let's see how I want to do this. I'm going to throw the high school on this side and leave a bit of a gap. And I'm going to put the elementary school on. Come on. Oh, it's trying to snap to... I wish there was a, a modifier key that you could hold down that would let you move just one one tick at a time. Uh, that's alright. I'll, I'll put it over on this side. And let's just de-zone that little strip. Let's throw some trees down, because that's always nice to do. And put some over on this side. And I think a playground would also be a nice addition here. So... Ooh, Japanese garden. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't watched my uh, Minecraft 
series recently, uh, Leif plays Amplified. We did a Japanese garden build, uh, so if you're interested in that, go, go take a peek. That was a, a pretty fun project. Small playground is what I'm looking for. Where is it? <laughs> Am I missing something? Oh, okay. Small park. Small playground. There it is. And it will just fit. Perfect. Alright. So there we go. Got our playground. We got our high school. What would be nice is ball fields of some sort. You know, soccer fields, baseball fields, football fields, something to go with the educational stuff. I mean, it'd be fun to build, a, you know, a block like this where we've got our schools, a playground, and then have, you know, kind of sports facilities and make a whole block out of it. Uh, I think that'd be kind of fun. But I haven't seen yet in here um, those types of, of ploppables. Um, I would assume that they would be in decoration, I guess, and maybe we'll unlock that as we go, or maybe that'll show up in, in here, or possibly, which is um, something I've kind of been noticing, this this may be kind of a bare bones um, release, and the developers are, are probably planning on expansions that will add more content, so that is quite a, a definitely a possibility, seeing as I haven't uh, gone through all of the, the unlocks yet. I don't know. All right, let's see. We reached 10,000 population, so we get some more business policies. Uh, so some of these are kind of getting kind of interesting. They started out not that, not that interesting to me, but here, for example, you could create a district and then apply this high-tech housing policy to that district, and uh, it has the effects you see there. So it'll cost you a little bit more to upkeep the district but you'll get increased land value out of it because you've now created some, I suppose, some uh, regulations and policies uh, at your city government level that say, uh, you know, homes in that district have to be green or high tech or whatever. So we've unlocked the hydro plant and some train stuff, which should be really fun to, to work on. Um, okay, I don't think that is what we want to look at here. Okay, cool. So our next target is 16,000. We'll get a water treatment plant, which will be really nice, and a crematorium, which uh, is not really very important to us at this stage, but uh, probably will become so uh, as we go. All right, so we it looks like we've met our demand. Uh, residential is creeping up again, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Um, do some kind of avenue down here, riverfront thing, I think would be nice. Um, and actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna throw that down quickly. And we actually need some office stuff. So right in this middle area, where we have kind of this, this major intersection of our road, or of our city right here, I think I want, some of this right right in this area to be to be office. So actually let's, let's demolish this road here. And let's throw a road in right there. You know, make just eight tiles. And we will dezone this stuff here. And we're gonna put our first office zone. So office areas offer work workplaces for educated citizens. Make sure you have a university to provide suitable workers. Okay, so maybe this is, this might be a mistake uh, if we don't have a university yet, but uh, we'll see if anything gets built here at all. I suspect not if it actually requires a certain level of, of education, so we'll see about that. All right, residential and commercial still, demand is still going up, so we're gonna need some more high density commercial, I think. So I think I'm going to plop here and there and there. And we're going to need some more high density residential as well. I'm going to put a few, just a few blocks in of that. So like this bunch here, maybe. See what fits in there. That'll maybe give us a good indication of, of what types of buildings will fit in. 
not 4x4 four four grids. So we'll see what gets thrown down there. All right, well, we're, we've reached the end of our time this episode. It was a little bit rambly, but we had some some sort of uh, maintenance that we had to do on our city to make sure things are, are still going smoothly. Uh, we're still looking really good as far as our budget goes. That's fantastic. Our growth is looking good. Let's just check our city, city stats again real quick on our population change. So doing really nice there. And uh, cleaned up a little bit of this and yeah I got got our education sorted out so let's just take one more look at that data view we have uh, we have those buildings here so that will definitely help with um, with our overall education level but we really need to hit that university next I think and garbage will be another thing that we're gonna have to deal with soon as well we're creeping up on our capacity there again so anyway, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, it's really a pleasure to do these videos, especially when I know that uh, people are actually watching them and having fun, and uh, that uh, me spending the time to do this is, is enjoyable for somebody and is actually uh, adding something to somebody's day. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you did like the video, please leave a like. That'll help me uh, keep making these. And if you have any comments uh, in particular about uh, what we should name our city, leave those down in the comments below. And uh, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel and see a lot of the other stuff that I'm doing. Uh, Minecraft, City Skylines, uh, a new game, uh, Apotheon that I just started putting out videos for this weekend, um, or will, or today's Friday, so you won't see this video until Sunday, so you have already seen that the Apotheon videos are up. It's really confusing to do these ahead of time and then try and try and uh, talk in the past from the future. But anyway, uh, yeah. So I just uh, just want to say, hope everybody has a good day, and I'll see you next time.